Hello everybody. This will be a quick introduction to structured query language, more commonly called SQL or SQL if you use the American pronunciation. Before we start, remember a relational database is a database in which the data is represented using a number of tables composed of rows and columns, also called records and fields, which have explicit relationships drawn between them. The primary key of one table is used as the target of a relationship with the foreign key of a second cable. SQL is a language specifically for communicating with relational databases. It is a fully-fledged programming language in its own right, which means it allows an enormous range of functionality and flexibility, just like any other programming language. It allows a database administrator, a DBA, to perform all actions related to database administration, from the creation of a database in the first place, creation of tables and fields in the tables, adding, modifying and deleting data, and most importantly, generating useful information by querying that data using the relationships defined in the tables. Database administration and SQL are a specialized and valuable field of study in their own right. Most of what you can do in SQL is beyond the scope of this introduction. In this introduction, we'll be looking at how you can use SQL to manipulate table data and select specific data from a table. We'll begin by looking at querying a database table. All SQL instructions that you'll be using are designed to specify exactly which data you need to access or modify. A select query is a good example of this. To use it, you have to specify which fields you want to access, from which table, any criteria to limit the amount of data to show, and how you want this represented. Together, this select query specifies a particular set of data. Let's have a look at an example. The examples I'll be using in this video use a table of triathlon race data. A copy of the database is also available on the website if you want to try these yourself. Look at the SELECT statement. In this statement, we want to select three fields or columns. First name, last name and swim from the table. We are only interested in competitors from Japan. So we filter the results using WHERE to specify this country as criterion. Notice this doesn't have to be from one of the columns that will be displayed. Any field in the table can be used when determining criteria, even if it's not displayed. Lastly, we want to use sw the swim time to arrange the data. This example uses one of the displayed fields to determine how the data will be displayed, but just like with the WHERE criteria, you could have used any of the fields here, even if they are not displayed. And here we are. This results in a shortlist with the data arranged smallest to slowest, according to the time in the swim field. It's not part of this query, but we could just as easily have ordered this from largest to smallest instead. To do this, you add the keyword DESK for descending, after the WHERE clause to arrange the data from largest to smallest. The other basic tasks you need to perform involve modifying the table in some way. There are three basic processes you need to be able to do. Add new data to a table, change the data that is already in the table, or delete from a data from a table. Always remember, databases work from the assumption that they are multi-user. This means you are modifying data live, while it is potentially being used by other people. The single most important implication of this is that any changes you make that are committed to a database are permanent. There is no undo. After all, someone else could already be working with the change data as soon as you have made the change. This means you have to be careful and you have to be precise. Just like with a select query, you need to specify the exact location of the data you are changing. You must specify the table and use criteria to specify exactly which records you are working with. Let's start with inserting new data into a table. 
we use the insert into instruction for this to specify the table that you are adding data to, which fields to place the data in, which values to insert. It should be obvious, but the columns and values have to be in the same order in the list as in the columns line. You can also simplify this a little if you will be inserting data into all the fields in the record. In this case, you can leave out the columns line, but your values will still have to be in the same order as the fields in your table. Let's have a look at an example. Here, we'll be adding a new competitor to the table. We're not adding data in all the fields, just first name, last name, country and swim. The values are placed in, this, in the specific fields identified in the insert into statement. In this example, the primary key is automatically generated, but if this was not the case, then an appropriate value for the primary key, such as a competitor identification number, would also have had to be included. To change existing data, we use the update instruction. Remember, you're working on live data. There is no undo. There's also no polite little dialogue that shows you what records will be affected and asks you if you really want to make this change. Here, you specify which table you are affecting, which fields will be changed, and which records to change. Any update you specify will be executed immediately, so you have to be precise when specifying which data will be changed. If you do not specify exactly which records you are changing using a WHERE clause, you can easily mess up your whole table. Without the WHERE clause, the specified fields will be changed in every record in the table. A safe policy is to try out this in a SELECT statement first, just so you can see which records will be affected before you ac actually execute your update. Let's have a look at this example. When I added Hana to the table, I made a mistake and used the incorrect country. We are going to correct this. To do this, I specify that I'll be modifying the country field in the table. In this instance, I'm using the primary key to specify the record to change. This is the safest way of identifying a specific record. The value will be changed in is the country field in this record. After the update, the table contains the new value for the country. Lastly, to delete a record, we use the delete from instruction. Delete from removes an entire record from a table. You can't use it if you only want to delete the values of a few fields in a record. This is an example of changing existing data, so for that you would use update instead. To delete an entire record, specify the table and specify the criteria which identifies the records that will be deleted. Just like the update instruction, delete from is dangerous if not used carefully. You have to be very specific about which records you are deleting. If your WHERE clause is not specific enough, you run the risk of deleting records that you did not intend deleting. And if you leave out the WHERE clause entirely, you will erase all the records and with them all the data from the table. In this example, we'll be deleting a competitor from the table. I'm using first name to identify the competitor in this example, but in a real world use, I would need to be a bit more precise, otherwise I might delete more than one person. Using just first name will remove anyone whose first name matches from the table. And just like that, the record is gone. Notice that this does not affect any of the other records in any way. In particular, the primary keys are not changed. So don't be tempted to use an auto-generated primary key as a quick method of determining the number of records in a table. Well, that's it for now. I hope you find this introduction useful. In the next video, we'll expand on this introduction by looking at some of the operators that are available to you for building more precise WHERE clauses. 
We'll also look at how you can access data from multiple tables using join to connect the tables together using their primary and foreign keys. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.